Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So we're getting closer to an actual Thor Ragnarok teaser with footage from the movie. We're going to see one of the Infinity Gems, probably the sole gem in that movie. So I'm going to explain where all the gems are, there's six gems, what they all do, and how that's going to figure into Infinity War. So real quick rundown on the location and like which each of the gems are in this gauntlet here. There's six gems total. So I'll explain where they are in the MCU and then I'll explain like what each of them specifically does in the comics. The movies tend to simplify things a little bit, but first was the Tesseract, that's the space gem. That enables people, as you could guess, to travel anywhere they want to, they can be omnipresent. You can basically warp yourself all over the universe. The gem itself is the one that sits on top of the fist here, so it kind of looks like this orangish glow. If you remember, the mind gem, which is like the next one, is actually yellow, even though it's in that blue thing during the first Avengers movie. They, they tend to switch things. I think they just want the gems to look different because the colors in the MCU is different from the gems colors in the comics. So it gets a little confusing, but it just enhances people's psionic powers. So you have the mind gem like way over here on his thumb. And here's where things get really interesting because the gems, when used together, boost the abilities of the user. So like when you use the mind gem, with the power gem, it grants you simultaneous access to all the mines in the galaxy. So you get the idea. Even if you only have two gems, it's still a really big deal because when the abilities work together, they kind of recontextualize things and it starts to get really crazy. So the mind gem, as we know, is in Vision's forehead until Thanos rips it out. We have the reality gem, which is the Aether from Thor the Dark World. It's got some very mystical sounding abilities. It grants the user the ability to make things happen that normally wouldn't be scientifically possible. So it basically turns you into a genie where you could be like, you know what? I'm kind of hungry, so I want an entire planet made out of ice cream. Boom, you snap your fingers, planet made of ice cream. Currently, the reality gem, as far as we know, is still with the Collector. That's where they took it at the end of Thor The Dark World. We didn't see it leave his presence during Guardians of the Galaxy, even though he also, during that movie, came into possession of the power gem, which is purple, which at the end of that movie went with the Nova Core. So that's still with the Nova Core. But that basically gives the user control over all forms of energy that exist or will exist, and it also boosts the abilities of all the other gems. So those are the four gems that we've seen so far, leaving the time gem, which is green, which is in Doctor Strange's Eye of Agamotto, gives him control over all time, very simple idea. In the soul gem, which only leaves this blue gem right here. So I'm guessing it's going to be blue wherever it shows up in the movies. Which I know is weird because a lot of people feel like Heimdall might have the soul gem because he's so powerful. He has the innate ability to see across the entire universe. He could spot anybody anywhere. But I think a lot of that has to do with the technology in the Rainbow Bridge and the other abilities that are enhanced by Asgardian technology and stuff that's given to him by Odin. But it's totally possible that he's the guardian of one of the gems. But there is the rumor that he might die during Thor Ragnarok because Idris Elba isn't like super hot on playing the character because he's not a big thing in the movies. So it does seem like he's going to have a big blaze of glory moment in Ragnarok, whether it's against Thanos or against the forces of Ragnarok. But you've seen the gems, you've seen this teaser that they dropped, I think it was like last year, maybe even the year before last year. This teaser's been around for a while with him in the gauntlet. It was just meant to make you poop your pants a little bit. But it's going to be a lot more complicated than Thanos just going around, grabbing the gems, sticking them in the gauntlet, then going to the next gem. We have the idea of the ancients, the elders of the universe, the eternals, basically like the more cosmic beings of the universe, the immortals. There's a rumor that they're going to appear during Guardians of the Galaxy and will explain, you know, some of the grander threat in the design of the universe itself. Like the universe has a will. There are things that are even bigger than Thanos that are really upset at the idea that Thanos wants to destroy everything, or really that anybody would want to destroy it. They want to protect life in the universe. So I'm expecting the MCU version of that to be like a little bit simpler than the comics. So whoever ends up appearing, I think will be like the movie's version of the Living Tribunal, which is basically like the soul, like the entirety of the multiverse given form in like a living consciousness. So that is some grand cosmic shit. So it's going to take a while to work up to that. So I wouldn't expect any name drops of the Living Tribunal anytime soon. We're just going to find the next gems, meet these new characters like Doctor Strange. And then, like once we get to Thor Ragnarok, we'll see Thanos start actually going for the gems. The rumor is, is that we'll actually hear Thanos explain his plan just a little bit 
to Loki in the movie. Like, Loki makes the bargain because he doesn't want to be erased from existence once Thanos, as you know, starts to remodel the universe using the gauntlet. But if you've read the Infinity War comic, really like any of the Infinity Gauntlet comics with Thanos, it's going to be a little bit different from that. It'll be way simpler, probably way fewer characters. But because Thanos, like the next movie that Thanos is appearing in, like in a big way, is going to be Thor Ragnarok, that's the movie that will explain the stakes. So they're going into Infinity War. People who haven't read the comics will have some context for what it all means. Like, why is it so important that we stop him from assembling this gauntlet? Why is it that he wants to do that? So if you've read the comics, you already know all this stuff, but you have to remember that a lot of people that will go see these movies have absolutely no idea what's going on. They just have like the Thor thing going on during that funny trailer where he's like, who is the purple man in the chair? Like that's one of the reasons why that trailer was so funny because most people like who haven't read the comics are actually saying that exact same thing like, who is Thanos? Who is the Purple Man? What are the Infinity Gems? Which is why it's so brilliant. I would expect more funny videos like this when we get closer to Infinity War, just as a way for Marvel to like explain to people what's going on without having to spend like 20 minutes during the movies to stop and explain things. But here's my big question for you guys. Do you think that Heimdall is the guardian of one of the Infinity Gems? Or do you think we'll see the Soul Gem in Thor Ragnarok but it'll be somewhere else that Thor and Hulk will find on their big cosmic road trip. Like, it won't be on Asgard with Heimdall. I know a lot of people are like, what about the Midgard Serpent? But technically, he's supposed to be locked in the center of the Earth, and that's where the Aether was. I don't think that's also where the Soul Gem would be. Like, they wouldn't be right next to each other. But here's a really cool deep Infinity Gems cut from the comics. So, there's this gestalt entity, basically like the living form of all the Infinity Gems, called Nemesis, that soul is inside Ego, the living planet, Peter Quill's father, which we're going to meet during Guardians of the Galaxy. So in the comics, when Ego is reunited with the other gems, it reforms Nemesis, which is like this really terrible, terrible thing that you don't want to happen. So James Gunn said that there's not going to be any Infinity Gems in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and we're not going to see Thanos. So I don't think that they're going to do that from the comics, but it's just a nice deep cut Easter egg. Like if Ego were to come into possession of all the Infinity Gems, instead of forming the Infinity Gauntlet, it would actually reform the sentient entity that is all of the gems together. So you're reforming a god who is the gauntlet, or you're wielding the power of a god when you wear the gauntlet like Thanos. So just something that's really cool, but I don't expect the movies to address it. Giveaway time though, congratulations to this week's giveaway. Nick Guerrera, you win a copy of the Captain America Civil War Blu-ray. Be sure to private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. There's a new round that starts now. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. Blu-rays drop in really soon, so there'll be a whole bunch more Marvel DC this week. So get hype, it's gonna be awesome. You'll start seeing a lot more Infinity Gem related stuff as the movies get on in the next year. While you guys wait for my next video, you can click here to watch that funny Thor Ragnarok trailer again, and you can click here to watch the Civil War bloopers again. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five, I'll see you guys tonight.